when I was a student and I felt bored, one thing that I would do in school is I will pick up a book and I'll try to spin it around my And if you try hard, you'll be able to find a point where using a finger can support the book and it will not tip over. Okay, but now and very likely when you try to find a book usually the point that you can balance the book is right at the center instead of the other point if you try to do other point then obviously the book is going to fall so try yourself try to grab a book and try to find the point where you can balance the book and see whether or not it's at the middle two thousand years later so I think you find it's really in the middle, right? And so the problem right now is why? Why must it be in the middle of the book? Think about it. Think about this. When you have a book, let's say this is a book, you, if you don't want it to fall, then uh, one thing you could do is to apply a force here so that it can counter the weight. But then the position where you add the force, F, is going to be important. If only it will be on the same line where you have the weight, then the whole thing will be good. Because in this case, if you think about the mass on the left hand side and the mass on the right hand side, will be equal and therefore they can balance otherwise if you have the apply force to be on maybe a bit off like this for example then obviously you can see the mass on this side and the mass on the right hand side is not going to be the same right m1 is going to be bigger than m2 and therefore this will exert a greater moment onto the book and therefore the book will tip over and this is why uh, it is not easy to find a particular point because this point has to be very very refined and it will be exactly at the point where it will split the mass of the two two sides of the book equally and this is a point where you are searching for and that is not only for this dimension because the book is actually uh, if you don't consider the thickness, at least it is in two dimensions. So thinking about the book is like that, then you also have to think about the point where it will exactly support the book and split the book, not only left and right, but also in this side and this side as well, equally in mass. When we try to boil down this idea into a scientific term, we will call it center of mass or center of gravity. They are the same thing. And this is a point, an imaginary point, in a body where the total mass of the body can be thought to be concentrated there. And that's why in example of the book, if this is a center of mass, we call it CG or CM uh, for center of mass, then this is a point where you can draw the vector w representing weight and if we try to find a point where the book can be supported without uh, turning this will be the exact point where you want to add the force so that in this case the moment which is calculated by force time distance the distance will literally be zero and therefore there's no moment adding onto the book so you may ask if the center of mass is simply at the center, like in this rectangle, it is simply uh, you can draw a line, diagonal, diagonal, and this is the center of mass. Then why do we bother to do an experiment? Because obviously you can see here, uh, it, there's are the steps of experiment that you can do to find the center of mass. Before we answer that question, I would like to show you there is a simulation which is interactive and you can try to draw any shape you like. For example, you can draw a long stick uh, which is like the meter ruler that you have.
So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, in a total of 14 grid. And therefore the middle one is between the 7th and the 8th, right? So there's 7 on the left and another 7 on the right. So this symbol is showing you the center of mass or center of gravity. Now, if we try to make it thicker, okay, let's say with free layer, you can see that the center of mass also will change along the way. And now it is at the middle, at the second layer. Again, because if you look at the top and the bottom, uh, this is a point where it should balance the top and bottom as well. Going back to the previous question, let's get rid of this first. Uh, what you can do is you can go and check out this simulation. I will put down the link in the description below. You can go and check and make a random shape simply uh, like, like this. Okay, let's say very, very random shape. So you can see that the center of mass is now right here. And for an irregular shape, no, no matter how you do, it's very hard for you to say, oh, this is the so-called center. You can't say draw diagonal line because there's no regular shape. Like, not unlike uh, triangle or circle, you can do that. But then this one, you cannot really do that. So the question is, how do we find out the center of mass? Without going back to the notes, I want you to guess here. Uh, again, try to open up the simulation by yourself. Here we've got a pin. And then what we can do is we can pin any point you like and then you can click go and something like this will happen. I want you to think about and guess the procedures or the idea. How can we find out the center of mass using a pin? Pause the video, try yourself and think about it. Okay, so back to this simulation with, again, no matter what shape you make, it's going to be the same approach. Um, assuming you don't know the center of mass, but then as long as you try to add the pin and let it to rotate freely, think about this. When this shape stay at rest eventually, because what happens is if, if you pin at, say, uh, this position, you can see right here, right here then you will have a weight adding down below and therefore that will be a moment that rotate this object okay and because of eventually it will maybe there there will be some friction and eventually uh, it will stop at this position because this is the position where the weight will be adding along the pin and therefore the moment is going to be zero this is actually why we talk about this after a moment. Explosion. But the thing is, assuming we don't know this, because it's just simply this simulation showing us this icon. So if we really perform this experiment, then what we can know is we only know there's a line where it is possible to have the center of mass and therefore it's very important for you to do another round of these whole steps and to draw another line so for example if now i've got a line like this and then i can choose another point where is again let it to rotate freely and eventually stop and stay at rest and using this I will be able to find the two line and then the intersection and that would be the center of mass. If I have to annotate, it should be something like this. Earlier, it, we pin here and I think the line should be something like this. And now the line is something like this. And this is where the intersection is found and this will be the center of mass. So back to here, that means this is why we have to at least get two holes on your object and you have to perform these steps twice to find the intersection you want a demonstration okay so i randomly grab a box of mass and i cut out the cardboard 
and I get this. Oh, by the way, I'm not sponsored by this company. So let me just cut a random shape, okay? Because this is not going to be exciting. I mean, you all know it's going to be at the center. So let me just cut a random shape, maybe. Okay, how about like this? Okay, just a really random shape. So, so now what I need to do is to make two holes. And well, yes, you may argue that when I make a hole, I kind of change the the mass itself, or technically uh, change the shape of it. So, yeah, that's why you want to make a small hole as small as possible. So here is one. Okay, which okay, just a hole. And then uh, you want to get another hole and hopefully they are not on the same line through the center of mass. Okay, so here are the two holes. Now here I've got a two peg where I can insert to the hole and therefore you can rotate freely. I didn't use a pen because it's rather big and it may get stuck inside. So uh, you can see it will just rotate freely and eventually it will stop at a certain position. However, when I try to draw a line, because obviously uh, the center of mass should be under the toothpick, when these stay at rest, there will be a line where uh, we can find and draw here. But then we don't actually know, like, shall we draw from here or to here? Like, it's not easy to make sure that the line that you draw is really perpendicular to the ground. And therefore, uh, in the notes, there is something called the plumb line, where it's simply a string with a mass. So here, I have got my beloved pocket ball to hang here. And so in this case, then it can tell me um, the direction of the gravity simply. So ideally, if I could, I would draw a point here. And then another point here. I don't have to draw a line. I just have to draw two points. Because that will make a line. And then I can use a ruler to draw between that two points. Okay, like this. And that will make the first line. And so for now, we just have to repeat the whole thing again. Uh, because the center of mass it's going to be on this line. The possible center of mass is going to be on this line, but we don't know exactly where it is. So we need another line. So here we've got another point which I made earlier. And uh, let's just do the same thing. Okay, let it rotate freely. And then here we've got the plumb line again, the pocket ball. And then uh, again, we would try to find out the point where here and well hopefully well this is not going to be very accurate I mean if you can use a lab equipment and make this larger and that will be uh, way better and then I think another point that's going to be here and then we can draw the line the line that you draw may not be like fully covered on the paper you can see there's a gap in between them it's totally fine it's totally okay so let me just draw them out. Okay, so you can see this is the intersection and where the center of mass is located. So I will also want you to find the center of mass like I did. Go and find a cardboard, maybe also from your mass, the box itself, and you can also do the same thing, all right, just to practice this uh, experiment skill. And eventually, if you do it well, this intersection again the center of mass you should be able to balance it at that point like i did so in this video you learn about how the center of mass is being defined and also how to find the center of mass of a plate experimentally 
I hope you enjoy learning physics with me. If you do so, please hit the like button now and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.